Hey there guys, my name's Kevin and it's time to get into a new series and this might be the best series yet. We're gonna learn how to choose the correct strumming pattern for a song. I know this is something that you guys have asked about in a lot of comments, so I thought it was time to quit putting it off and show you guys the procedure for how to choose a strumming pattern. It's really easy to do and we're gonna take a few days, go through a couple of different time signatures so that you can learn how to apply a strumming pattern to a song. Hey, what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. So, you've got a song you wanna learn, and you don't quite know which strumming pattern to apply to it. You've been in this situation before, I've been in this situation before. So, the first thing you do, let's just say, for example, that you're trying to learn Brown Eyed Girl. Hint, we might use that as an example in this video. You look up Brown Eyed Girl, you Google it, and you say, all right, what are the chords to Brown Eyed Girl? Now, maybe a song sheet pops up. So that's where we get into the procedure here. The first thing that you need to do is gather information about the song. So typically when you find a song online, you're gonna find maybe a list of chords or maybe you'll find a song sheet with the chords over it, but it doesn't tell you how many times to strum and it doesn't tell you which strumming pattern to use. What I would do first is I would Google maybe a little bit further, see if you can find a song sheet. So I'm gonna use a book throughout this video called 365 Days of Ukulele, or The Daily Ukulele, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. But that's a good reference point because song sheets like this will give you a lot of information. So I'll be referring to some PDFs that we'll have up on the screen here and point out some of these things to you. So you may have heard about this in a music class, and I'm not gonna go into a full-blown music education seminar here, but the first thing you need to look for is the time signature. So in this lesson, we're only gonna talk about the 4-4 four, four time signature. At the beginning of a song, typically, you will see two things. You will see the time signature. That might be 4-4, four, 2-4, four, 3-4, four, four, 6, 8. There's a lot of different things. And then the second thing you'll see is a little description of the type of feel the song has. It might say lively, it might say moderately, it might say swing, it might say waltz. That's all information that's gonna start kind of cracking the code as to which strumming pattern is available to you. Now, a tip that I have for you is maybe you can't find sheet music. If you can't, you can always just Google what is the time signature of X song. What is the time signature of Brown Eyed Girl? That information is readily available now thanks to the interwebs. So you can find that information even if you can't find a piece of sheet music. So step one is in your pocket. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is identify the genre. You're in luck because most songs in the pop, rock, Americana, country genres are in 4-4 time signatures. So that's gonna give you the group of 4-4 time signature strums that I'm gonna mention a little bit later in this video that you can use. So step two is just simply identify what genre of music it is. So step three is a very important one and that requires you to really keenly use these little things here, your ears. Piece of advice I have for you, put on the song recording of the song that you're trying to learn. And also, if you have a song sheet in front of you while you're doing this, this will help you gather a lot more information about the song. At this point, you can start identifying which instruments are involved in the song. Is it a piano song? Is it an acoustic guitar song? Is it an electric guitar song? Those are all gonna be determining factors in kind of how you approach your strumming pattern. Now, something else as part of the listening exercise is to start kind of tapping the beat to the song. Now, this will do two things for you. You can A, start identifying what the tempo of the song is. There's a lot of metronomes that have a tap function on there where you can actually tap on your metronome and figure out how fast the song is going. Or, as I'll tell you again, Google has this information, so you can simply just look up how many beats per minute is the song, and generally they have that information for you. So, tapping along and listening to the song, start identifying the instruments, start identifying the feel, this is a big factor in it. You wanna listen, and don't just listen once. Listen to the song several times. Really get a feel, listen for the chords. When do the chords change? Do they change on a certain lyric? Is that jiving with the song sheet that you're looking at? Those are all little things and tips that I think will help you to really conquer and figure out the strumming pattern. So now we've talked a little bit about the procedure. 
and some of the tools that you're gonna have to start identifying some things about the music. Let's talk a little bit more about that 4-4 number that you're gonna see at the top of the piece of music, or maybe you've Googled it. Now, when you see that, 4-4, and this is just a little kind of dive, getting the feet in the water um, on music theory, but basically when you see 4-4, that just means there are four beats in the measure. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, I'll break it down even further. All that means is you count to four. Now, when you're counting to four and you're talking about strumming, your down strum will be the numeral, one, two, three, four, and your up strum will be and. So within that measure of four beats in the measure, it's one and two and three and four and. Now I'm gonna talk about other strumming patterns that fall within that four four, but that's all you really need to know at first when you look and see that. You know if you see anything in four four, technically, you could just use down up, down up, and that's all you would need for the entire song. But we're gonna make it a little more interesting than that. But for now, know that four beats per measure means four down up, down up, down up strums. So let's do a little playing together here so you guys can kind of get in the feel of counting. And counting is something you wanna do. Maybe you were in dance as a kid and you spent a little time counting before, or maybe you've just kind of counted with uh, the beat on your, uh, on your lap when you've tapped along with a song, but counting is something that's really valuable to you when you're strumming. So let's just do a little example here. We're gonna mute the neck by just touching the strings. And every down strum, I want you to count one, two, three, four, and every up strum, I want you to count as an and. So let's just do that nice and slow so you can kind of feel what a four, four time signature is all about here. So one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one more time, two, and three, and four, and. All right, so now that we've got our go-to down-up pattern for the 4-4 time signature, Let's take it a step further and I'll show you a second pattern that you can use. So now this pattern is just going to be down, 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 up, down, up. So let me show you how to count that. So right now what we have done is all we've done is taken and omitted the two up strums in the first two beats. So I'm going one, two, three, and four and. Now something that I want to mention here is the ghost strum. So when you do the ghost strum, basically you're going up with your fingers, but you're not touching the strings. So I go one and is actually not touching the strings. So that's a very important little piece of information here, because as we get further into this, you're going to need to do, omit some other strums. But the rule of thumb is you always want to be subdividing. You always want to be going up and down. You never want to be in the habit of just going down, 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 or up, up a bunch of times in a row. Your hand should always be subdividing the rhythm. Let's just play this one a little bit and count it together. So let's just take a C chord to make it a little less boring here. Ring finger on the third fret on the A string. So let's just count this pattern nice and slow. So it'd be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. So down, 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 up, down, up is another pattern that you can use in any song that you identify with a four, four time signature. I'll mention this as well. This is part of the listening component. If you try to apply this pattern and it doesn't feel right, it just doesn't feel like it's moving the song the right way, this is where you take a little time to experiment. I'm gonna give you a third pattern that you can try as well, but just start getting this in your mind that your first decision on strumming pattern might not be the right one. So you can always kind of adjust as you go and try to figure out which sounds better, which feels better, and take it from there. Let's get into our third pattern now. Pattern three 
is a strumming pattern that if you've been playing the uke for a little bit, I'm pretty sure you've come across and I'm pretty sure you've tried to apply it to a song or two. It's down, down, up, up, down, up. Now let me show you how to count that one right away because this is one that you probably have looked at on a sheet of paper and wondered, how is this in the 4-4 time signature with all of this weirdness? Well, let me show you. So when you count down, down, up, up, down, up, again, we're always gonna be subdividing, going down and up as we strum. We're gonna be counting one, two, and, and, four, and. So that's a little bit weird how they've placed the rhythmic pattern there on the 4-4 time signature, but just watch again slowly, and you can follow along in the graphic below. It's one, two, and, and four, and. And note there, my hand is always going down and up as I'm doing this. So even when I'm omitting a down strum or an up strum, my hand is still ghosting over the strings. That's something you really want to get in the habit of doing as you do rhythmic stuff. Always keep the hand moving down and up the entire time. So down, down, up, up, down, up is the third pattern that you can use in the 4-4 time signature. So again, maybe you've come across a song and the first two patterns just didn't feel right. Or maybe you got a little bit bored doing the down, up, down, up pattern. This would be a good pattern to apply. I've taught hundreds, maybe thousands of songs over the last several years. And I can say that down, down, up, up, down, up will work in most situations. Now you might get bored with it. And I have a strumming series that I'll leave a link in the description for that you can get into a whole bunch of other patterns. But to start, try this down, down, up, up, down, up pattern because I think that will work for the majority of pop, rock, country songs. And I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of examples of songs here with a 4-4 time signature with the strumming patterns that go with them. A perfect example of a song that you can use, a down, up, down, up pattern. The most simple pattern is my favorite band, The Beatles. And one of my favorite songs by them is Hey Jude. Now, something you'll notice about Hey Jude and Let It Be and a lot of Beatles songs is they were played on a piano. And with a piano, a common, common approach is the kind of pedaling effect that happens. So the consistent down beat that's happening with the right hand on the chords and the piano can perfectly be emulated by using the down, up, down, up strum pattern. So a lot of times when you hear a piano song that's in 4-4 time, you can apply this down, up, down, up strum. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of quick examples here of a few popular piano songs that I just mentioned. Uh, the first one is Hey Jude. So here we go. Two, three, four. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. And then with Let It Be, similar thing. You've got a piano. You've applied this down up strumming pattern. So it would be when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. So those are just a couple of quick examples that I wanted to show you of 4-4 time signature using just a simple down up pattern over a song that's played on the piano. All right, so let's look at the down, 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 up, down, up strum. So two examples I have in this one are a Beatles song, again, I'm sorry, I love the Beatles, and a modern pop song, Hey Soul Sister by Train. So here I'll show you how the same pattern can be applied to songs that are kind of in this little different era, maybe the same genre, but you can find the different feel here. So. I'm gonna play the first example, which is All My Loving" by the Beatles with the down, 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 up, down, up pattern. And this time, rather than sing it, I'm gonna count so you guys can feel that count happening as I go here. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one. And then 
the second example is Hey Soul Sister, which now they use a little bit faster tempo with the same pattern, but this one I'll play in the key of C. The actual song is played, I believe, in the key of E, but just for uh, an example purpose here, I'll play through the intro and just count through here at a little faster pace. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Counting fast. One, two, three, and four, and 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 one, two, one, two, three, and four, and one. So that's an example of two different kind of pop genre songs from different eras that use the down, 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 up, down, up strum. Think of some other songs that maybe are in this vein, and then try applying this pattern to them. See if it works. If it doesn't, Experiment, try some other ones. So last but not least, the down, down, up, up, down, up pattern. So the two examples I'll use here are Billie Eilish, who just won a few Grammys, and Van Morrison, who probably won a few Grammys a long time ago for a song that you guys probably know, Brown Eyed Girl. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples here of those songs and how to apply the down, down, up pattern. And again, I'm gonna count as I go so you can kind of hear all of these broken down into beats and measures and kind of start feeling what it's like to tap along, count along with a chord progression. So here we go with Brown Eyed Girl. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and again. And if you guys want to learn that entire song, it is in my Learning Through Songs course that's on the All For You website. You guys can grab that if you'd like to learn more, kind of go through a full in-depth play along, strum along with Brown Eyed Girl. And for the second song example, which again, we have a full tutorial for on the channel, is Party Favor by Billie Eilish. So in this example, I'm just gonna play through the verse and you can look up those chords off the website if you would like. You're gonna use the strumming pattern two times per chord here. Here's an example of Party Favor, Billie Eilish. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. Two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and. Just one time on C one time on G, again C, and four, and one, two, and, and four, A minor, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and F, and four, and one, two, and, and one time on C, G. So those are several song examples with the strumming patterns applied to them. Now, you may come across some song that has two chords within the measure. So let's say the chord doesn't actually take an entire time through down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So the strumming pattern, you have a song in the measure that you see, it says C and A minor over one measure. So rather than counting one and two and three and four and, you would count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Same thing can be applied to the other strumming patterns, but this is something again where you'll want to listen identify, check out the piece of music, see where any of these spots are where you know that you're gonna to have to change chords. 
Maybe it's not always laid out perfectly for you. Some of these things you're going to have to do a little further investigation on. And that there was just a little side note for you. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for another series. I've been enjoying so much that you guys have been commenting and leaving your questions. And I'm excited to share another series with you, which I hope will be a lot of helpful information on applying strumming patterns to songs. So in saying that, I will also mention that all of these songs that we're talking about today, I will have in PDFs on the, wait for it, all new All For You website that will be launching soon. So keep refreshing your browsers as the new website will be dropping in the upcoming weeks, month, I'm not really sure. And I'm not sure when you're gonna be watching this, but the new website will be coming soon and we'll have a lot more information, worksheets, PDFs, courses, more videos, more everything for you guys to help you become better ukulele players. If you enjoy this video, make sure you like, subscribe, leave your comments below, share it with friends. If you know somebody who's struggling with strumming or can't figure out how to apply a strumming pattern, let them know, spread the word, tell them about all for uke, tell them to come see Kevin and learn to play the ukulele. I thank you guys so much for watching me. I'll see you next time.